All right, Judson Powell, the fastest 15 minutes on social media and on the internet. <laughs> hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I want to talk about something uh, that's going on right now. We all know about the, the whole, you know, thing with Kanye West and uh, him converting to be a Christian and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but the other night, uh, there, was a, there was a video that was circulating online uh, by Kirk Franklin. And uh, it talked about how in 2016, uh, some of his remarks uh, concerning African Americans uh, that were being targeted, uh, of course, by police brutality, were cut uh, from his speeches at award shows. And then the same thing basically uh, be it done now. And one thing that he pointed out was that uh, basically, like, there was a difference between Christian music and gospel music. Gospel music was black. Christian music was white. All right. And so, you know, so so I was like sitting there and I was just thinking to myself, let me first of all, my background, my background was working for the for the church, was working for, you know, in fact, I worked for several denominations in the church. And not only did I work for several denominations in the church, but I also program music for the church. I program gospel music for many, 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 many years. All right. And so I knew what he was talking about because they don't play certain artists like on Christian radio stations, just like they don't play, uh, you know, certain artists on gospel radio stations. You know, in fact, Christianity is like the most segregated thing ever. I don't think, and I don't think people really realize just how racist it really is. I mean, it's really, really, really racist because white folks basically don't want you at their churches and black folks really don't want white folks at their churches, although we are more uh, endearing to white folks when they come in. Just like if you ever get, I don't know if you ever noticed, but if you ever go to a, a, if you see white people at a black church and the church happens to be one of those churches that has a broadcast, you will always see a obligatory picture of the white couple on the screen <laughs> if they're in the audience you know they will always show it and i was in media so i understand that this was a thing that was systematically done because why because these pastors want to think that oh we you know i'm so i'm so in depth in what i'm teaching or whatever that i even got white folks coming to listen to me all right now with that said okay we got the whole so now we got the whole thing going on and basically it's the n-word wake-up call for my man Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin, of course, and what y'all don't realize is it's all the same industry. Secular music, gospel music, uh, entertainment, whatever it is, it's all the same industry. And the same people control it. So the same people that control rock and roll, R&B, hip hop, uh, whatever this mumble rap stuff is now, all of that stuff is controlled by the same people. Jewish people control the media. I'm just going to let you know. And the, a lot of a lot of the people that control the media are also homosexuals and are also, uh, you know, in, in the in the LGBT community. So don't get the game twisted. It's the exact same game. The only difference in the game is, is that the way the money comes in. All right. And, and as long as the money comes in, they really don't care. Now, let me explain something else to y'all. These people don't love Jesus. They don't even like Jesus. They don't even talk about Jesus. All right. What they talk about is what? Stockholder bottom line. How much money can we make and how much money are they going to make for us? The reason why right now all of this stuff with Kanye, well, first of all, it was Snoop. All right. Don't forget now. Let's let's put it in there. Snoop made a gospel album, right? And they tried to push this Snoop Dogg gospel album on everybody. And, you know, people wasn't really buying it. You know, and then, of course, Kirk Franklin was the original because he came and he used what? He used funk music. And I, I mentioned this in another in another uh, post before, but he used George Clinton's music. And basically, 
you know, they they rapped over it, you know, even though it was it was not like a, a straight up conventional rap. It was, you know, it was like, you know, uh, the, the whole stomp record and everything. And of course, it, it got major airplay. Why? Because of the factor of the funk music being played in the background. And then, of course, you had the critics, you had people, you know, the church mothers and all that who were like, well, we don't, you know, we don't like this kind of music and this is not gospel music or whatever. And so, of course, everybody was, was there was a propaganda campaign, of course, what? To let everybody know that uh, basically, you know, the, the, that the music was changing and this was the only way that they were able going to get young people into the church but it wasn't about getting young people into the church it was about getting young people to start buying gospel music again why because they weren't running to buy you know uh uh maddie moss clark and and uh you know james cleveland records they wasn't running to the store to buy that stuff so they had to get somebody they had to get some new blood and even even with the Clark sisters and the Winans and all of these other groups, what they started making more modern sounding records and records, you know, they were sampling and doing all this kind of stuff that had never been done in gospel music before. But then they ran out of people. It was like because some of the some of the more traditional groups like the Clark sisters refused to go like completely in that direction because why they still had their gospel roots. So. You had to realize that they needed they needed people in order to like switch this whole thing over because they started losing money. It ain't got nothing to do with Jesus, y'all. It's got to do with cash, money. All right. And let me explain something to you. So that's how come they went and they got they got Snoop at first. You know, it's like yeah, look, Snoop, but everybody didn't fall for it. In fact, even young people didn't fall for it. It's like well. Snoop, you know, Snoop cheats on his wife and he got, you know, and he's smoking weed on the record. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, these are not, you know, these are not uh, uh, Christian values or whatever that we're trying to push forward or whatever. So now, uh, and so, and so we have now, we have the whole Kanye West thing, right? So we have Kanye West out there and the, the thing about it is, is that they're pushing it out there. I mean, literally, if you look on your timelines and stuff like that on the internet, you will see that Kanye is like on everybody's timeline and he's constantly saying something stupid every single day, even for a Christian. Even for somebody becoming a Christian, he says stupid things every single day. And what is it to do? It's, it's in order to grab our attention. But in the main thing is just like I say, he is the Pied Piper right now. He is the one that they have to lead you to the slaughter. He wants to lead you into religion. And the reason is, and the main number one reason is, is because all of these people since the 80s, look, literally since the late 80s, People have been leaving the church, the Christian church in droves. People are not buying Christian music. People are not buying into the church thing anymore. And people have started to see, you know, even the preachers, the pimp game, all of the things that are going on. And we know, you know, the, the, the fact that all these pastors are super mega rich and all of the people in their congregations are mega poor. You know, it's, it doesn't add up. So then all of a sudden you have all these people leaving the church and going back to spirituality, even witchcraft and voodoo more so than going to the church. Why? Because the church has no power for people. The, the church ha is the church is completely, you know, all of the power that people think the church has is completely psychological and social and social. That's it. The fact that everybody goes to church, you know, you show up at this church and your friends and your family and all of that, they're, they're there every Sunday. But even the origins of that are still slavery. The origins of being able to even go to church on Sunday are slave master origins. And now that all this stuff is coming out, we, we're starting to see more and more. And so by these people at the Dove Awards and the, and the Trumpet Awards and all this kind of stuff, by them coming out and showing showing overtly showing racism towards one of the artists that made them rich made them rich Kurt Franklin made these people rich these people weren't making no money I'm telling you because I know I saw the money that was coming in 
okay? They weren't making any money. And Kirk Franklin revitalized the entire gospel music industry, all right? There was no, pretty much, there was no more gospel music industry. So they have a rooted interest. They have a vested stake in making Christianity go. Well, now all of a sudden you basically gave Kirk Franklin the, the N-word wake-up call. And that's what we've been trying to tell everybody about getting out of the church. Get out the church because the church ain't for you. Jesus ain't for you. I'm just being honest. The church and Jesus are not for African Americans or descendants of Africans or anybody that has melanin in their skin. That whole deal was made up to make money off of you. Even these fake, all of the fake holidays, all of this stuff, we are celebrating. Do y'all realize, guess what's about to come? First of all, we're right on the on the cusp of Halloween. I think this is like the day before a holiday. I don't even know what day it is. But then we got Thanksgiving and they have somehow transferred Thanksgiving into being about God and Jesus and, oh, we're giving thanks. But y'all... Thanksgiving was the Christians killing innocent natives, indigenous people. So how could you take a book that tells you to kill indigenous people in their own homes, in their home land, in their home territory, but yet and still all of a sudden it's about Jesus? You really believe that that's about Jesus? You think that's about Jesus, but we celebrate it, you know, because what? Once again, the social implications, just like with slavery, we got to go to church on Sunday. Master wasn't beating us. We didn't have to work and harvest crops. We didn't have to work and plant crops. We didn't have to work and bail, uh, tote that barge and lift that bale and do all that kind of stuff on Sunday. So that's why we went. We didn't go because it was our God or it was spiritually enlightening to us. It wasn't. None of this stuff is spiritually enlightening. If you know about, if you really learn spirituality, you'll realize that all of this stuff is made up. It's a hoax. And so now, think about what they said. They were like, we don't, we don't want to hear about, about your people going through police brutality, Kirk Franklin. Shut up. You know, we're going to cut you off. We don't, we don't want you to talk about that. We don't want you to get up here and, and talk about the fact, you know, that that black people in in night in 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 2019 are still slaves and are still in slavery and are still subjected to slavery tactics. The overseer. That's why when, when these people be out there, they talk about their overseer of a church. I'm like, do you know what the connotation of the word overseer is? The connotation of the word overseer means the person guaranteed in the in the congregation so that you won't tell stories of freedom and power and anything like that during church service. And then after that, to make sure that you don't run away. That's what an overseer was. So wake up, y'all. Wake up. And Kirk, I hope you wake up and you come to spirituality and start realizing what that your ancestors were great and that your ancestors invented all of this stuff that they stole, plagiarized, and tried to redo. Okay? And tried to say that it was that it was, you know, sent to them by God. Which is a God, even the word God is a made up word by them. It's not, it's not. We never call we never had that word in our language. All right. The most high, you know, netters, all of the things that they try to tell us were bad or try to tell us were, 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 were horrible, this, that, and the other thing. But they're still doing the same stuff, but they're just doing it underhandedly. So I, I feel for all of y'all that might be following, you know, uh, the Antichrist of Kanye West. <laughs> you know, I got to say that because, I mean, there is nothing else more. And, and then he's talking about how he got a $68 billion tax refund and all that kind of stuff. Whose money do y'all think that was? And who do y'all think is broke? You know, all the people that, that, that we follow, they billionaires and multi-millionaires, hundred millionaires and all that kind of stuff. But yet and still, our communities are poor broke and lonely. Anyway, I gotta go. I love y'all. 
hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the, you know, hit the get rid of Kanye button. <laughs> Do something. Jesus. <laughs> oh, I should have said white Jesus. <laughs> anyway, bye. I love y'all. Like, subscribe.